What is going on guys? Got something really special that we're installing on the truck today. Let's go ahead and take a look. So right now, you can see the water port that I had uh, is gone. We sold the water port off the truck. Now, if you're not sure what a water port is, this is what it looks like. Uh, we used it to shower at the beach. Um, we used it to clean dishes and stuff at camp. Worked great. I have really no complaints about the water port. Uh, for what it was, it worked really fantastic. Um, and overall, um, uh, it did what we asked of it. Now, over the past couple months, I uh, started seeing uh, something about something called Midnight Forest uh, Rain Basin. Uh, looked really cool. Didn't really put too much thought into it uh, just because I was really happy with the water port. Um, and then I kind of started looking at it a little bit closer and I noticed some things that I think um was going to make it a better solution for for us as far as what we do at camping um what we do at you know while we're working on car stuff and just like overall in general now before i get into all that let's do a, an, an unboxing now this is the four gallon rain basin from midnight forest for those of you that haven't seen this before i'm going to kind of walk through um show what it is show the different components of it install it onto my extrusion overland rack and kind of demo everything and kind of cover some things that i didn't see in some of the other videos that i watched of this product um some of the other looks like some tests that i i think would be really really beneficial to know uh before buying this product so let's go ahead dive into it let's take what we have in this box and unbox it and take a look all right so now that i've unboxed everything uh, let's take a look at it. So this is the four gallon rain basin. Now, size wise, it, it's definitely not your standard four gallon roto packs. Um, your standard four gallon roto packs is gonna be a lot larger than this. Actually, um, so it, the, the size is definitely a narrow profile. It is slightly thicker than a standard like four, uh, four and a half gallon roto packs. Uh, so it does make sense that the, the footprint of this is going to be a little bit smaller um, so let's kind of go ahead and take a look at the pressure wash system uh, so it is uh, what I would say very close to like what you would consider like a um, like a Ryobi style portable pressure washer if you've ever seen those I'll take a put a picture of it right here uh, battery powered um, when you're on the road when you're off-roading when you're camping you don't really need anything super crazy like some sort of a detailer level uh, pressure washer system uh, but I'm going to kind of go into the pros and cons um, and there, there's definitely a lot more pros with something like this than I would say a standard type of um, uh, water port uh, design uh, but there's also some cons so I'm going to kind of go into and go into all that but uh, let's go into the rest of the pieces um, it does have uh, the standard type of uh, I think this one's for the gravity shower stuff um, so it this is non pressurized um, for the pressurized portion uh, you do have this sort of fitting that goes on to the pressure washer gun which also attaches uh, this nozzle sprayer now from what I've seen now I haven't tested this yet from what I've seen the connection points are going to be um, very similar to what you would find in a standard pressure washer uh, home setup um, I do have some concerns uh, you know obviously I haven't looked into their warranty I'll, I'll kind of put a little screen snapshot of their warranty up here um, I have some concerns with it being an off-road type product uh, you know with it being this plastic it, it could break uh, but if it is a standard type of um, connection point, you should be you can get these uh, pretty cheap on Amazon. Honestly, you can get the metal ones. I believe for around ten to fourteen dollars. Uh, so not a big deal. Just kind of a thought, you know. As I'm going through this, um, I, I do like the case that it is nicely laid out. Uh, it does come with the the hose. Now this type of hose connection um, is what you would find in like a uh, water port setup. Uh, it's nicely packaged in here. Everything kind of just fits in, snaps in really well. And uh, you keep this case with you uh, when you're traveling to use this. Now, the only downside I see is, let's say you do have a failure with the gun system um, and you do need to use this. The only option you have is the, the gravity uh, system, which I don't think you're going to be able to pressurize that much as much as a water port. So that is a downside I think I see so far. Um, with the setup is if you do have a failure in this like if you're on a long trip 
something does fail with the gun, um, whether your battery dies or something else happens, um, you have no way of really internally pressurizing the system to continue using it. Um, like with any product, there's trade-offs. You know, I, I don't foresee myself if, if something does fail, uh, we typically would have some sort of a backup. And, you know, when you're camping, overlanding, whatever you want to call it, uh, pretty much with anything that you do hobby wise, if it's something more critical, you should have, whether it's heating or cooking, you should always have a backup solution anyways. Um, so just kind of going over it now, just to preface this, I, I have not uh, been sponsored for this video. Uh, I bought this with my own money. So I'm kind of giving you my full thoughts as I'm stepping through the, the owner, uh, runs the Instagram page, really great guy answers a lot of questions uh, that I've asked so far. Absolutely love it. Uh, no major complaints. Now I did notice on the, the case itself, these plastic latches don't seem as sturdy. Obviously you're gonna have this contained either inside your vehicle or um, inside maybe a deck system. Uh, I will say, <laughs> like I feel like I probably could break this within a trip or two. Um, not a big deal, uh, but maybe having the ability to purchase a backup case might be a good idea. Uh, you know, for if they sold these cases for like maybe five to ten bucks, I would maybe keep a, an extra case on hand um, if my latches broke or the case broke. So, either way, let's get this thing mounted onto the truck and uh, take a look at how it works. I have finished the install. I had to take a break and kind of go to Home Depot to get some hardware. But here she is on my extrusion overland rack and now i've got some things definitely to say about it one uh these brackets are really really cool this isn't like your standard type of rotopax type bracket these they're not billet but they have that kind of look like that bolt billet aluminum type look to it um i'm assuming this is aluminum obviously you wouldn't want steel it'll rust out pretty quick uh, but the hardware is really really top notch um you know Obviously, it's an outdoors product. Uh, it does have kind of like an unfinished look to it. Not a huge deal. I know some people might be pretty particular about that sort of thing. Uh, but then again, it's going on your truck. It's going on your off-road vehicle. It shouldn't be that big of a deal to you. Um, just a couple quick notes before I actually demo the product for you. If you do have an extrusion overland rack, you are gonna have to go get um, some longer bolts to bolt into the extrusion, uh, the T-nuts that go in here. Uh, so just mind that uh, the hardware that's provided does not work with the extrusion overland rack. Now, I've heard that extrusion overland is gonna be working with Midnight Forest possibly. Uh, so they might bundle a package that, you know, you don't have to go to the hardware store. That'd be kind of cool to see uh, for those of you that do have extrusion overland racks and you do end up picking this up, save you some time. Now, I'm gonna kind of talk about some of the pros and cons that I see um, as far as the four gallon basin compared to like the eight gallon that I was looking at. Now, uh, it was one of them that I was looking at. It did have a way to fill up the tank while it was still on the truck. I believe it's the eight gallon. There is really no way that I can tell uh, of a way to fill up this tank without taking this off the vehicle. I think the eight gallon, you can fill it up through the top here. It would have been nice to see um, not a huge deal, uh, but but I get it, right? Anyways, the design, um, it does have this like little uh, rain collection thing, which is kind of like, I guess it's, um, I guess it's kind of goes with their brand, you know, the rain basin. Uh, if you're out traveling for a few days and you don't have access to water, if it does rain, uh, you can collect water in here. Now it does say you don't want to have sediment and dirt inside your water because it is going to go run through a pressure washer gun. You don't want that stuff to go in. I've seen some other folks on YouTube that did fill it up from a river. You could possibly do that, but I think you do run the risk of uh, damaging the pressure washer gun doing that. Um, <clears throat> another highlight here, I'm going to show you guys what the hardware that they provide. It does come with, and this is really cool because a lot of manufacturers don't really do this. It does come with locks and keys to lock this in to the actual rack itself. Let me go ahead and show you guys how that works. So this is the lock and key. It just goes right in and then you turn it and then it locks and you're not able to slide this out anymore. So that's a really nice included feature that they don't charge you extra for. So that is nice. A lot of these overland companies, they tend to charge 
you know, for the little things, um, you know, they could have left this out of the package deal uh, and then charged you separate to, if you wanted to lock it. Now, if you didn't have the locks, you could always run like a bike cable uh, through the center. That's an alternative. Um, you know, the one thing that does worry me, it does come with a lot of extra keys, but you know, if, if you don't have them in your truck or you lose these, uh, this is <laughs> going to be on here. You're going to have to drill that out. It's going to cause some problems. Um, I don't know if maybe I'm going to eventually go with a bike lock or I'm just going to be very, a very good steward of keeping track of these locks. Now let's go ahead and get to the part that you guys are probably wanting to, uh, actually see. So this is the gun itself. It's pretty lightweight. Uh, you know, I, I haven't seen any videos where people talk about uh, the weight of this because this is something that, you know, your wife or your kid might use if they're wanting to clean the dishes or you want to, um, you know, just do something, I guess, rinse off some gear. Uh, it, it's not very heavy. I can, I can wield it with one hand without any problem. Now, let's take a look at the, uh, the quality of the gun. Overall, I mean, obviously it's like an ABS plastic. It, it's not gonna be all metal. You can see that this is looking like an actual brushed motor. It's not a brushless motor, which I wouldn't expect to be brushless because the, the cost would go up if it's a brushless motor. It is exposed to the elements. Uh, they do put into the disclaimer here. Um, do not let the battery get wet. Do not store it outside. Yeah, you, you don't want to leave this outside because water can get inside here. It could maybe rust out some components and then your gun will fail and then you have to get a replacement. <clears throat> Overall, over here, going to the connection point here, this is a screw-on type of connection. Uh, I've got it on pretty tight, so I'm gonna kind of leave it on there. Uh, <clears throat> there is a plastic sleeve that goes over the top. There's no way to, to attach it, it's kind of loose. Um, you could probably take that off, but I mean, I wouldn't. I would just kind of keep it there. Um, moving up here, I don't think this is brass. Um, I don't know what kind of metal. It, it looks like an anodized aluminum. Um, it's got your standard type of connection for a pressure washer gun. Now, there are multiple settings on this pressure washer tip. Uh, you've got your standard pressure washer, like washing the vehicle. You've got a 15 degree. Um, you got a zero degree, which is kind of a just basically a straight line. Um, it's not gonna be fanned out. 25 degree, 40 degree, and you've got your shower modes. Um, you can rinse yourself off. Now, this is gonna be great. When we take this to Cape Lookout, uh, we're gonna have this to use to kind of rinse our feet off. Uh, we're not gonna have to pressurize the, um, the water port. It's gonna be nice because the water port, the thing that I noticed with it uh, was that it would lose pressure over time. Uh, you know, while you're letting it sit out, then you got to repressurize it, repressurize it. Or when you're taking a shower, you have to keep the pressure up. So you either have to hook up. What we did was we used the bicycle pump, um, like a, a motorized bicycle battery powered pump to keep it pressurized. Or you have to kind of hit that little lever action thing on the water port to keep it pressurized. Now, the great thing about this is all battery powered. You don't have to worry about keeping it pressurized. Now, this is the hose that it comes with. Now, if you're familiar with Waterport, Waterport has more of a coiled, hard coiled type of hose that comes with the kit. Uh, I think there's some pros and cons to that. Obviously, the hose, this hose is going to stay inside the case. Uh, the Waterport could be left outside. It's coiled up. It's not going to hang loose. Now, this is a 16 foot hose um, and it doesn't have any type of rigidity like the Waterport uh, that is coiled up. Um, just overall thoughts and impressions about this. This is pretty standard what, of like what water port uses. Now this type of tubing, I have concerns about it. Um, obviously it, only time will tell, right? It, it feels strong, right? But after years of maybe heat cycles, um, after years of being cold, I, I doubt we're gonna really use it in freezing temperatures, but over time, I think this could become brittle and crack. It, it really just depends. Now, what I would like to see um, from Midnight Forest uh, to kind of maintain, you know, their customer focus, right, um, is to provide like uh, a la carte parts, right? If I want to buy extra parts to service or keep as backup, right? Like when I go to the beach, I would like to maybe have a backup hose maybe some backup connections. Um, I'm definitely gonna get a backup battery. 
Uh, now, as far as a backup gun, I don't think the gun's going to fail, um, you know, quickly. I mean, but then again, anything electronic, any type of mechanical part can fail over time. Um, I think the biggest thing is making sure that you have good customer service to make sure that stuff gets serviced. Uh, you know, luckily for us, you know, most of our trips typically don't go over three to four days somewhere. Uh, the majority of our trips are overnighters. But let's go ahead and hook this up, and uh, I'm going to show you how easy it is. Um, to get working. Let's go ahead and take this hose here. And uh, this has been pre-filled with uh, four gallons of water. Um, I'm going to hook it up to the connection point now. Here's another thing too. This connection just kind of screwed on. Very similar to water port. It has a release valve that opens up and closes. So if I open it up, it's gonna let water out. And then I'm gonna connect this. It clips on, you hear a little very audible click, and the actual hose, let's, uh, let's kind of give you an idea of how large this hose is. And I think a, a really cool video is, can I pressure wash and clean a vehicle with four gallons of water on this midnight force? Maybe I'll do another video at some point. Let's go ahead and take this hose all the way down to the front of the vehicle. So, we're looking here. You know the size of a Ranger, a Tacoma, it's very similar. Um, it goes all the way to the front of the vehicle. So that's how much um, hose you have. Now, um, if you do need to move it to the other side, it's very easily, it slides out that way. I will give you a word of caution. With any type of vibration, the mount could possibly shift and it could be a little bit more difficult to slide out. Not a fault of Midnight Forest, but it's just the nature of dealing with mounts and brackets. <laughs> if you have an extrusion overland rack and you see here, I, uh, I put my hand here and I slide it out. Well, my knuckles hit this pretty hard and uh, it, it definitely was not a fun experience. So just kind of be mindful if you do have yours mounted this way, you know, when you're pulling out, just be careful when you're sliding it out. So we've got this hooked up and uh, let's go ahead and grab the gun and the battery. Let's grab the battery. I've been plugging it in here for a little bit. It does come with this and let's actually, let's talk about the battery. Uh, real fast it does come with a single battery uh, it looks very similar similar to a dewalt style battery i don't this it looks proprietary because uh the charging port is actually right there you see it right there it, it seems like a proprietary battery what i would like to see um from midnight forest uh if maybe maybe they will maybe they won't is maybe an adapter that works and allows you to use a dewalt battery milwaukee batteries just because i have a lot of those batteries already um and i don't really want to buy more batteries to keep track of uh, you know i cycle through four or five dewalt batteries it'd be nice to have you know obviously it's it's a little bit of a pipe dream um from a company but Maybe they will, maybe they won't. Either way, uh, this is it. I don't know what the capacity is of this. I'll look this up online to let you guys know if it's like a 5,000 milliamp hour um, or something different. Now, from what Midnight Forest says is that the battery will last, uh, at least on the four gallon tank, it'll allow you to, I think, discharge the tank four full times. And I'll put a caption here if, if I'm not right on what I just said, but I think it's like four times on the four gallon and like two, two and a half on the eight gallons. Um, so either way, I mean, you're, you're really going to have a lot of battery power when it's fully charged. So charge it up before your trip and, um, you should be good. Now, most of us carry auxiliary battery systems with us to charge it as we're there. Uh, they do sell like a car charger, which would be helpful, you know, for those of you that don't have battery systems. Either way, let's get the, uh, the battery hooked up onto this thing and, uh, let's take a look at how awesome this thing is. All right, so the battery goes on, just slides on really easily, clips in, there it is. Even with the battery, it's still not very heavy. It has a, a, a good weight to it, uh, but nothing too bad. Uh, we'll go ahead and hook up the hose connection. All right, pretty easy. So there she is. Uh, it's basically three pieces, the gun, the hose, and the actual uh, Midnight Forest rain basin itself. 
So what you're going to want to do, obviously as it is pulling water through the system, it needs air. So just kind of like when you're filling up with fuel from a gas canister, you open up the air valve on this side to allow the air to pass through. We're going to open the valve. All right, valve is open. Now, here she is. Let's uh, let's spray it. Going to prime. And as it pressurizes, there it goes. You got full water pressure. Now, just to compare it to a pre an actual pressure washer, it's not going to be as strong as like a 3,000, 2,000 PSI pressure washer. But when you're at camp, you're cleaning dishes, you want to get mud off of your sliders or your door handles, um, it's going to be enough to do that. Now we're shooting at the, at the 25 degree. Let me switch it up to the 40 degree. So the 40 degree is actually going to be a bit of wider fan spray pattern. Um, it's going to change things up a little bit. It's not going to be as strong, but it's going to be a little bit better. So if you're wanting to clean off your feet um, or your legs, uh, it's going to be a nicer spray pattern uh, to do that on at the beach or wherever you're at. Um, it does have the zero degree. So when we switch it to zero, it's, uh, it's gonna be a stronger spray pattern. Not bad at all. Not, not bad at all. Now, as far as how much, how long this is gonna be able to spray, uh, I don't know, I'm not gonna stand here and hold the trigger long enough to drain the entire tank, but overall, when I was messing with it earlier and testing it out, um, I filled it up, I sprayed quite a bit of the wheel, I did like a, a reel, I sprayed the slider, I kinda was playing with the different settings. I was spraying quite a bit of water, and uh, there was still a lot of water left inside the tank, so overall, really impressed by this. Um, <clears throat> as far as improvement, now, some of you might be asking, well, can I use, uh, you know, what if, uh, what if this breaks, right? What if this piece breaks? Can I use a standard pressure washer attachment? So let me go to my pressure washer and grab a 25 degree pressure washer attachment. Let's see if it actually connects. Uh, let me set up the camera. All right, let's see if it actually connects. And it does. Now let's see if it actually works. Now this is something that I was kind of curious about um, because it, that kind of opens up the the opportunity to use different attachments that come with standard pressure washers. Now, obviously, no YouTubers that I've seen has really tested this. So let's see. This is, I think, a 25 degree tip. I feel like it actually comes out stronger with this, um, and that could be the nature of the design of the inside of this sprayer now this sprayer is actually it seems like it's all plastic with the exception for the tips you know not bad it's cost effective uh, but i think if you're going on a trip it might be handy to keep a bag full of these um, pressure washer tips to use if you want to stick with just a 25 psi tip and then that way you don't have it's just one less thing to do when you're at camp um, you could leave this tip on it and you don't have to uh, move this one on Hope you guys enjoyed this video. I really, really like the product. Like I said, this was not a sponsored product. Um, this is something that I bought with my own money. And uh, overall, I'm really happy with it. You know, obviously, if there are any issues with it that I do encounter, I'll always give feedback uh, to the company. Long term uh, usage, you know, encountering any problems. You know, I, I did notice like there is a little bit of a, a weight on the actual hose. There is a little bit of a... Uh, what I would call a stress point um, on the hose when it's filled with water. So over time, this could probably become weak. Um, I might have something here to kind of lay the hose on to kind of relieve that little bit of a stress because uh, when this kinks up, uh, it's gonna maybe cause a little bit more pressure, um, unwanted, um, you know, uh, wear on the uh, pressure washer hose attachment or on the, on the hose itself and the actual pressure washer gun itself, uh, trying to siphon out that water with a little bit of a kink in it. Um, so I might have something here, but overall, 
I think it's a great system. Uh, this system was $399. Uh, the other thing is, you know, if I do want to upgrade to an eight gallon system, it's just something that I've been thinking about. There's no way to buy the eight gallon tank that I see for right now. You have to buy the $500 eight gallon system, which I think kind of sucks because there's sometimes certain trips I would want to take eight gallons and then certain times when I would just want to take the four gallon. There's no option to do that at the time. Um, of shooting this video so maybe they'll open it up at some point maybe charge a little bit more than they normally would if you wanted to buy it piece by piece uh, but overall i think it's a great setup hope you guys enjoyed this video and i'll catch you next time bye